and have a great one. Uh, from autos, let's move to another vessel, shipping. Uh, the shipping industry is in focus with rising inflationary pressures across the globe. We've seen a shrinking demand for goods and weakening of cargo movement. Now, this has led to lower freight rates globally. To discuss the impact on the shipping and the container industry, we're joined by G. Shivakumar, who is the executive director and CFO of GE Shipping, and Sunil Vaswani, the executive director of Container Shipping Lines Association. Uh, gentlemen, morning to both of you and thanks for joining us on the discussion. Mr. Shivakumar, I want to start with you. What has the exact impact been on the global freight rates because of the challenges that we've seen in pockets like Europe and UK? Morning uh, and thanks for having me. The uh, challenges that we're facing in Europe and UK, as you described them, are actually resulting in uh, better rates for uh, the tankers, which is a majority of our fleet. Basically, trade patterns have changed significantly. A lot more Russian crude oil exports are coming to Asia. Uh, and those European imports, that is Western European imports, which used to come from Russia, are now coming from East, which is basically the Middle East. And that's resulted in a higher demand for tankers because they just have to go longer distances. And that's why tankers are doing uh, pretty well for the last six, seven months. Right. But that's the impact we've had from the issues in Europe. On the other hand, you have China, which seems to be slowing down in commodity consumption, which is affecting the dry bulk market. Uh, so you have steel production going down, you have iron ore imports going down, you have coal imports going down, which is affecting the large bulk carriers, the cape sizes. Not so much the smaller bulk carriers, uh, which have a lot of other cargoes to carry, but we've seen dry bulk rates come off. Uh, quite a bit. Mm. Mr. Shivkumar, uh, on the container side, we've been hearing uh, that rates have plunged. I mean, spot rates have plunged, right? And uh, the contract, because bulk of the business, I'm assuming, on the container side is carried out on uh, contract rates. Those will follow lower, sharply lower. But uh, for your business on the uh, tanker side or the uh, sort of uh, bulk side, it's the opposite. I mean, things remain as strong as they were the last time you spoke. Is, is that correct? I mean, even from three months, four months ago, uh, very strong? Yeah, on the tanker side, yes, they remain as strong as they were two, three months ago. Uh, dry bulk may be marginally weaker uh, on the large size bulk areas, not so much on the smaller sizes. And 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 uh, for you, what is the split uh, between uh, dry bulk and uh, tanker oil? Yeah, so our fleet is 60% crude and product tankers uh, and 10% uh, LPG ships, which are on tank charter and don't get affected really by the spot market. The remaining is bulk areas, dry bulk ships. And the dry bulk, uh, those rates have come off. Uh, can you tell us how by how much or that's about 30 percent, 30 30 percent of your business, right? That's right. They've come off, but still at profitable levels. Still at pretty prof, very profitable levels. I'd say. Mm. Just the level of profitability is reduced. That's all. Right. Uh, take that point. Uh, we do have with us uh, Mr. Sunil K. Vaswani, the executive director of Container Shipping Lines Associations as well. Uh, Mr. Vaswani, can you give us a sense of what uh, the container availability, uh, you know, the traffic, the demand, etc., is looking for the next couple of months? Because you have the holiday season in the U.S., you have a lot of, uh, uh, you know, what do you say, a lot of traffic, so to say, that usually takes place in uh, this period of the year. How is it looking as compared to previous years? Yeah, uh, uh, morning and first of all, thanks for having me on the show. Uh, as you very rightly said, you know, changes have been taking place rather uh, quickly, actually. And as you would have known that during the pandemic, you know, when there was, uh, before the pandemic, there was excess capacity. And during the pandemic, suddenly, you know, there was a mm. surge in demand. And of course, uh, the capacities fell short. So, so the shipping lines did all they could to uh, get those additional capacities. And as far as India is concerned, we repositioned 1.85 million TUs of empty containers into the country in 2021. And we introduced uh, additional capacities to the tune of 35,000 TUs a week, which annualized works out to 1.82 million TUs annually. Uh, now, these efforts have been continuing this year as well. And as a result of this, you know, the container availability and the space availability is now not an issue, you know. This is freely available. Also, the other thing that's happened is that uh, our, our ships were actually stuck at ports because of heavy congestion. Uh, till, uh, in January 2022, for instance, we had 14% of our fleet uh, stuck in ports due to congestion, uh, which today has come down to 8%. Uh, 
so so that much fleet is additionally available to carry cargo although the 8% is still not normal because the normal figure should actually be 2% but it's still better than that so so that's helped in getting an additional capacities uh, number 3 is of course uh, we all know the global uh, economic situation uh, and the situation in the west which is economically uh, now weak so that's why uh, the mm. demand also is over there relatively slower but of course you know we are waiting for the uh the, the the sales to begin you know that should be any time now in the next week or two and then we would know exactly how much is the demand and also the demand for the spring season uh you know the buyers would start placing orders in november so it's once that happens uh then we will get to know what the situation is but one thing is very clear you know the freight rates that were there before the pandemic were unrealistic because of excess capacity the freight rates that were there during the pandemic were also unrealistic because suddenly the demand shot up and we were not prepared for it so but now after that what's happening is uh, it's going to be somewhat uh, midway you know midway between the two and the rates should stabilize roughly around those levels it a lot also depends on the which way the russia ukraine war goes uh, because i hope wiser sense prevails and eventually uh, people come to the negotiating table uh, if that happens then this Uh, uh the surge in the oil prices that are there, there today which is actually pulling down the global economy uh, would stop uh, going to that uh, level and uh, and things and demand would increase and uh, cost would go down and things would be more stable so so currently that is what i foresee Thank okay you. got that got that uh, mr vaswani we'll come back to you uh, mr shivakumar you made an interesting point where you said that trade patterns have changed quite a bit and now tankers have to move for longer hours so you know uh, and reroute uh, because of which the demand has gone up uh, can you quantify it for us how much have the rates improved for tankers how much has the demand gone up by and how will that reflect in your own business uh, what could the growth be for you purely from tankers yeah so the uh, demand uh, uh, sorry the impact on our business comes from the change in rates that our ships earn the day rates the time charter equivalent day rates what happens uh, what has happened is that demand hasn't changed very much since before the conflict started in end of february uh, and now except for the normal seasonal changes which happen uh, what has happened is that you it's just that the oil travels longer distances uh, and therefore you need more ships to just perform that that work and i think i mentioned earlier so ships were across the board whether they were a you know 45000 ton product tankers or our 150000 ton crude uh, tankers were all earning around the 10000 dollars per day uh, level today those ships will probably be earning 30000 dollars a day and which has been the case for the last 3 months at least so that's what happens in the rates and of course you know that our cost base is more or less fixed uh, it's just operating expenses interest depreciation overheads right. so every additional dollar just goes to the bottom line so it's just in the change in rates because you just need more tankers worldwide to do the same amount of work uh, because it just has to travel more distances and there is an upcoming potential disruption which is the self embargo by the european union which kicks in for crude crude oil in december and for refined products in uh, in february which could again uh, be a significant disruption of the trade patterns trade environment mr vaswani uh, rather mr shivakumar uh, you know just a quick one to you once again mr shivakumar a lot of the money that uh, shipping companies also make is by buying ships at uh, the bottom end of the cycle and then perhaps selling them at the higher end of the cycle as well uh, where in the cycle are we and what are you doing with regards to buying and selling of fleet yeah we sold a couple of ships in the last quarter we sold one of our old gas carriers and one of our older crude tankers in the last quarter Uh, we are now in fact now that we've got these strong cash flows and some sale proceeds we are now net cash so our cash balance is more than our debt outstanding uh, so we are waiting for the opportunity unfortunately prices because and not just unfortunately it is logical that because rates are high prices of ships are also high so currently we don't see an opportunity really to invest uh, in uh, any reasonable quantity so we'll wait for the opportunity to invest so shipping companies typically are collecting cash now mm. uh, some of them are reinvesting but we are not okay all the best uh, thanks a lot for joining in so that is uh, the word coming in on the shipping industry by the way 
for the market just want to point out that it's picking up further pace now so the nifty is up uh, about 80 odd points uh, led by the banks which are up 140 points and the